Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today we're looking at using fibre casting to make a, a name for in this example and then creating it into a kind of little scene and slumping it. This is a creative one I made for my daughter Lena um, who really likes swings and unicorns. So I'm now going to show you how to make this. So to the, make the names we've cut out a template um, this is Lena's and this is Rivers and we cut the template out of paper in the design we want and then pinning it to the six mil paper we're now going to cut that out. So this is really simple, simple as that, this is how we do it and we're now going to cut it out. So now we've cut these out we've glued them using PVA or whatever glue you've got to hand and onto a piece of thin fire and they're ready to fill. Um, I'm going to think of a theme for these, I like to kind of block colours together so with rivers I'm going to do a rainbow, I'm going to start with reds and move across and then with leaners I'm just going to do it all kind of, for want of a better sort of thought process, um, slightly wintry kind of colours, um, you know, pales, pale pinks, pale whites and creams. But as is always normal, I'm going to kind of, um, I want to be using 50% um, scrap, so I've just got a load of scrap cut up here. Um, some kind of in really handy shapes um, that I'm just going to put in the bottom to start with on both of them and then once I've done that I'll start adding the colour and um, you've hopefully seen videos of mine before how to do this you've got to build it quite a way up I use this glue to sort of put on so I get a quite a kind of good build up of, um, of colour with this um, with sorry colour with glass on this so I'm going to go ahead and fill these up and then we'll see what they look like when they're done and ready to go in the kiln. So as you can see what I'm just doing is cutting up scrap and um, you know grading it from the um, the red to orange to yellow. I did vaguely draw lines on here to sort of think about how much I wanted for each colour so I sort of knew how you know how big it was. I'm using these um, mixed um, marini mixes so this is like the yellow marini mix to kind of Luckily, I've got them already cut, so I can just use them to sort of add bits to the different colours. Um, I've used these red hearts, XL hearts, and I've cut them quite long. Guys, if you see some one of our products and you think, I'd really like that, but they come in standard 6 mil size, and I want something bigger. I want my mine because I got it for a project and I want it bigger. You can always write in the comments when you're checking out and say, can you cut this to, you know, 8 millimetres? Can you cut this to something? And we will always help out. We're very... That's what we want to be about is, you know, kind of really personalised um, service for everyone. So if you want something specific or you've come up with an idea of a marini you want, come and talk to us. We do, you know, we have had people before say, I really want this colour marini. And I'll look at it and think, is it worth me pulling? How much do you want of it? Let's give it a go. So um, always have a think about that. And if there's something you particularly want or an idea you have, we might be the um, go to people for that. I'm going to carry on filling these up and we'll have a look at them when they're ready to go in the kiln. So here are these, all full. I've added a little shards of dichroic on them as well. I've tried to make sure the dichroic is dichroic side down, um, but I don't mind too much if it's up. Um, it will all add. And I just thought, you know, for my kids, so just add that little extra bit of sparkle. Um, you could also use that kind of dichroic powder, and this could be good as well. They're as full as I can get them. And now they'll go in the kiln on a full fuse, and we'll see how they are when they come out. Here they are, all fully fused and out of the kiln. I'm really pleased how they've come out. So now I've cleaned these up and I've ground all the edges. In fact, I'm lucky because I have a sandblaster. I've actually sandblasted the backs and the sides of these as well to really get as all the residue off. Um, if not, you're just gonna have to take your time grinding them away until you can get that all away. So I'm gonna put River to one side and think about Lena to start with. Now, she's a bit of a unicorn fan. So lucky we have a Taurus saw and we've cut um, on this unicorn. I'm just going to put it here so you can see it um, I'm rather than being on the white paper. This unicorn out of the white and I'm, in a pure stroke of genius, it fits perfectly here. Now I'm probably going to just overlap it a little bit so that we get a really good joy and it's going to be a delicate um, piece uh, as well. Now I have a piece that I made some time ago, um, this little one with a swing, that basically my daughter Lena, every time she comes in, she's like, can I have it because I want the swing? So I thought it would be really nice with this um, to 
put a little swing. So turn this into like a tree and then put a little swing here. So I need to make a couple of little metal um, hooks that's gonna go underneath here so that the swing chain can hang off it. I also need to put into fire polish a little swing. So I'm gonna make this tree up and then think how else I want to decorate these. Um, and uh, then once I've done that, I'll get you to come back to me. So here it is decorated and ready to go in the kiln. I've used these um, leaves we had to sort of create the tree um, idea. And you can see the hooks, which will be for the swing. Um, I've used a couple of our flamework flowers here. I mean, the difficulty is, is that the tree is kind of, you know, it, it is like a tree and the unicorn's quite small. And then if I you put big flowers on the, um, the uh, sizing is all slightly off, but I thought it's a bit of a fantasy little garden. Um, done another little plant here and I have used here and on here some of the dichroic powder. You can get this in England from warm glass and I'm sure in America from kind of place like AE. Um, it's great just to literally add a kind of touch of um, wow for this particularly because it's for um, a child. Um, I'm not sure how long this will last when Lena gets it. Um, so this is going to go in and attack fuse. I'm going to go in on a uh, a slightly heavier tack fuse than I would normally if I was um, firing things like this and the unicorn because I need it all to stick together. Um, so I'm going to try that kind of 750, 760 uh, and hope we don't lose too much definition on everything um, and we'll see how it is when it comes out. Now we're going to start on the the um, river one which we're doing as a kind of, um, a kind of this is going to be more like a little flower garden. So we're going to use the flamework flowers and sort of make it bigger and flowers and I might kind of um, cut some flowers out of uh, glass as well. It's sort of more inspired by um, this piece and doing this kind of piece with a name than kind of the other one. Um, so I'm going to do something like this for her. So here it is, our kind of the wonderful flower garden all done. Um, we packed it quite a lot together because uh, we don't want it to um, um, kind of we want everything to fuse together. I'm, I sort of said in the last take that I was going to, when looking at the one of Lena's, that I was going to take it to a, a high tack. I decided I'm not. Um, I'll take it to a sort of normal tack. What attaches um, is good, what doesn't, doesn't. I will go along before I do anything and I'm just going to check that everything is pushed in as tightly as it can to, to each other's itself so that it's got the best possible chance of tack fusing together. Um, so I will do that before it goes. Once I probably put it in the kiln is the best time to then look and go, is that touching? Is that touching? Is that touching? And just making sure everything is touching because if not, it just won't, it will not tack together. Um, so this is going to go in. We've got lots of layers, lots of different things. So it's going to be a three hour kneel on it. Um, and uh, we will see how it is when it comes out tomorrow. So here they are out of the kiln. I've already put rivers on the um, uh, bender. Um, I'm a bit concerned with this one. It's quite um, heavy this way and uh, I'm not sure even when it's bent that it's not going to stand up and fall over. Hmm, I'm, I'm not really sure what to do. I'm going to put this piece of glass behind and see if I can try and get it um, to at least have a bit more weight at the bottom with that piece of glass behind. And uh, when I put it on the kind of the bender, I am um, i don't want it too far this way. Oh, I do want it far this way and, and then it will slump and this bit will slump more. Um, so I'm gonna sort of do it like this and hoping that this area slumps round more um, and this will slump a little bit and we'll see. Um, this one I'm also slumping so it, it, it's slightly this bit is slightly further in the air because the R is heavier than all of this. Um, so I'm going to put these in they're going to go on a very very slow ramp really really slow and easy um, because they're close to the elements and um, oh god I shouldn't be touching my elements um, they're close to the elements and um, yeah they're close to the elements and we'll have a long anneal afterwards um so we're gonna put them in now and we will see how they come out afterwards um just a quick final thing i'm thinking about it um <coughs> because i went hotter i said i wasn't gonna go hotter but i did i ended up going to seven um 760 because i got it in the kiln and then i got worried and i was like oh i'm not really sure um 
and two things that the, uh, the 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 flowers as i said the fiber paper i should leave in for slumping i've taken it out here by mistake but i'm going to try and shove a bit back in and miller said to me should we put a bit of fiber paper in the hole where the a is um so that it doesn't close up close up and i'm gonna get that hot and she was right we should have put some fiber paper in the hole miller you were right <laughs> um so yeah you might want to think about if you're going this hot and doing it like this if you were just leaving it as a um as the river and not adding the extra bits on i would i would just fire polish it at like a 730 um and then you wouldn't lose any of this definition but if you're going to do add extra bits on and you need to go for the hotter firing to make sure they're really well tacked on then you, if you've got small holes that might like close up like this one nearly has done then you'll probably want to put a bit of fiber paper in them so um i'm going to put these on and we'll see the, how they are so here they are out of the kilns um i had a bit of a boo-boo guys i took them too hot um this is you know don't do fusing when you're tired moral of the story so on this one the um unicorn this is running away a little bit i do love my swing though and i know how much lena will love the swing um but that one's at least okay unfortunately river has totally totally spread apart um I went up to 680 and I probably should have done it on like a, a slump of um, kind of 650. Uh, as I said, doing things when you're tired, it's not the best. I will make sure in our firing schedules on here, it's a six, um, 650 slump. But again, as I say, you need to know your own kilns, know what you're doing um, in them because I'm not giving you technical stuff. I'm just giving you kind of nice projects. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm slightly tempted to take the fiber paper out and go, here you go, my eight-year-old daughter. It's a piece of modern art, um, but I'm not sure she'll appreciate it. I will think about it and see. But, you know, I feel that I could have remade this and really done the video, but actually we're getting pretty busy um, here towards our tourist season that we're hoping will happen with, with all that, without the coronavirus. And I'm probably going to have to slow down and doing YouTube videos for the next couple of months um, to be able to manage that. So I wouldn't really have the time to redo this one and get it out to you uh, in the time frame I have. Um, so please excuse me if you don't get so many YouTube videos in the next few months, um, but I will start again in the uh, autumn and we'll see what we can do uh, if we can think of a few to do between now and then. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and please don't be too disappointed in my um, failures or creative modern art. Uh, and I hope you've liked this video and if you have, please subscribe.